when I, I mean, being invited by the twine, say, you will come to the ice park and then talking about some of your experience. So I'm just wondering, what can I talk to the people in here? So you spent lots of money to pay the registration, so lots of things. Mm -hmm. so, so I have to give you some of the, my personal experience about, uh, in particular, the interdisciplinary, because uh, Hanyang University, I mean, historically speaking, Hanyang University is around, uh, around eight years old university in Seoul, and the private university, and their stronghold, strong background is uh, engineering. So we have uh, 35,000 students, including postgraduate and undergraduate, but the biggest discipline is engineering, around the 300 professors in working in engineering department. The rest of them is around the 70, including the medical school. So that means half of the real professor is from the engineering, which means they are very, very strict. Which I'm saying, uh, it's not, what I'm saying is strict means is kind of they love their discipline. Okay, it's mechanical engineers, electric engineer, computer scientists, they love their discipline, but they suddenly our new president, university president, not the country president, the university president is appointed two years ago and then uh, asked me uh, to find a way to make Hanyang universities more vibrant and then more interdisciplinary which is really hard to make it. Well, of course, is I, I was also the engineering background, like uh, the industrial engineering is my master and virtual degree in, uh, in industrial engineering, and then suddenly jump into the psychology discipline uh, as part of the human computer interaction. And then is working in the computer science uh, in New Zealand, and then come to Hanover University in a couple of years, I think it's five years ago. So that was a really hard work to find uh, some of the things, uh, how I can educate uh, the student in Hanyang University, as well as how I can influence the, the professors to make a collaboration. We want even more collaboration, which means I'm saying the interdisciplinarity. So the, our president, university president, is want to make us about uh, Department of Art and Technology, which I'm not an artist. <laughs> Okay, so but then I have to know many things about the artistic physics. So now I can confess to you that what I'm trying to deliver today is like 20 minutes. Uh, it's kind of why I choose the virtual reality as a platform for collaboration between artists and engineers. That's all. Question? I apologize. Oh. You can take the volume down. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, but thanks a lot. Yeah, don't worry. Volume down. Audience center design. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, so but I believe that the virtual reality, uh, I'm not a virtual reality uh, researcher, but I mean, what I believe the virtual reality has a, some kind of common ground between engineers and scientists, uh, psychologists, as well as uh, artists. So what I believe is very multi letters, but I mean what I propose to the, our university president, if you really want to make an art and technology department in such a strong engineering background university, we have to change curriculums, we have to appoint new professors, uh, but our president doesn't agree with it. So no more professor, okay, no more curriculum change, but I mean you have to make art and technology successful. Which is impossible, I believe that. By the way, that's why I'm just looking at the virtual reality. It might be some of the language, common language. So when I meet with the mechanical engineer professors, engineer from mechanical engineering, computer science, electrical engineering, even performing art professor, they love virtual reality. They don't know exactly how they can use it, but uh, they want to use it. That's all. And they ask me, you have a virtual reality technology and can you help me out to find some of the new project, such as from the Minister of Defense or Minister of your Art, Art or Culture or something? But I mean, they're looking for that is a kind kind of buzzword in Korean, so that they're looking for virtual reality. 
So that's why I'm just choosing this one as a research platform plus uh, kind of I can explain later why I believe that interdisciplinary is uh, somewhat difficult or if interdisciplinarity need to be successful, what kinds of approaches needed is kind of what I'm uh, trying to give you in a couple of, uh, in a couple of uh, slides. Okay, so that is kind of idea about I want to propose to the our underage level, but this one is one of the main things about today's talk. The reason why I believe that, uh, as I said, virtual reality is kind of common language, common language between the engineering and artists that all sorts of things. So I just installed 3D virtual table system like this one. So that is a unique one in Korea. So that is a four, me four meters wide and three meters depth and the height is around three meters. That is cube system, uh, four the real background. And the interesting part, I you cannot see the front page, but we have a stage in here so that audience can sitting on the stage and they can watch uh, performing art or music art, performing music. Or sometimes it's a film studies and the guys who are studying the film, they are just acting in here to, you know, as a final research project you know, under the web. So that is why we have to make this one for a yeah, very expensive platform. So, but we made it, otherwise we cannot do something. So that's what then the process of how we make it and then all kinds of motion tracking system, and the real background system, that is all is made by the, our student plus the, on the outside the small and medium enterprise who never done any kinds of this experience. So they have helped us to build up this kind of platform. So that is, I believe that uh, now is a kind of platform, okay, springboard. What I'm saying is more of a springboard is better work so that all the professors, all the students are fascinating about this one is working in the center of the university and then they want to uh, work with us. It's kind of uh, it's incentive as well as a kind of what I'm saying is a bait. So I can just recruit the people. Okay, so if you're interested about the virtual reality, that is first in the Korea, so do you want to use it? And then say, yes, I want to use it. But that means you have to come to our research lab and then you have to work with us. So that is kind of what we believe that this one is really interesting research uh, starting point. But now is something about different. So I made uh, some, in two and uh, three years ago, I made uh, such a platform, the Springboard platform for virtual reality. But uh, my last two years experience particular uh, to recruiting the master student and PhD level student and then to educate on the regular level student who, who are having all different types of background like economics, performing art, uh, music and sometimes an engineering student. So uh, the most difficult part of the educating was that in, in this kind of interdisciplinarity uh, they needed some sort of uh, research methodology, you know, that in the mechanical engineers or, or electrical engineers or psychology even, they have their own research method. So that, that is in the undergraduate level, they have to learn about what kinds of research method they can use to study about their own questions. But when they move from the disciplinary study into the interdisciplinary study, they don't know what to apply. So for example, I have an economic student uh, graduate from the economics, but he only knows about the mathematical equation about uh, invisible hand, for example, supply demand. But I mean, they want to. I mean, the student need to know, still need to learn many different types of things like uh, virtual reality programming, 3D programming, or psychology, or all sorts of things they have to learn. But I mean, when they have to finish their thesis, they don't know what method they have to use. Research method, what I'm saying. So that's why we are thinking pretty much about uh, how we can educate the student from the all different types of discipline to learn about these kinds of interdisciplinary studies like art and technology. So that's what I see the overlapping point between the all engineering, psychology, and art is about uh, the movement. 
So that's why I'm saying uh, the multisensory, the research methodology for virtual reality at Hanyang University means I'm teaching uh, all students from year one, uh, in particular the master level, first semester and second semester, we are teaching all professors is teaching about this kind of sense of movement. Like performing artists also include the movement. Uh, and psychology, we are talking about the multisensory too. And even mechanical engineers, they, they learn, they already know about what is movement in uh, mechanical engineers. So that's why we just found the common language between the all different types of discipline. And then the sense of movement you want to make is in on the virtual reality platform. That's what I'm teaching, what we are teaching to Hanyang University students as part of the, or the interdisciplinary research methodology. So that is what uh, I believe, we believe that we're moving. So that's why it's kind of common ground between the all different types of discipline. And yeah, so this one is one of the example or the master student at this time is doing is that doing uh, this kind of project is about the air bounds. It's very simple air bounds, but I mean, they just adding up. This student is an engineer student, and she, he is working with a student from the music, and a student from the art school, and they are making a team to build up this kind of kids ground. So basically, what they are doing is that is how we can provide some multi-sensory information to the kids, something between age between two to five. So in that case, it elbows is basically every movement and then information is background and touch feeling and sound feeling. So all different types of things they are making together or under the leading of the, this master student. So that's kind of way our, our team, I mean, what I'm saying is our department is a master student is leading a project with uh, three or four undergraduate students from the all different disciplines. And then we provide project-based learning or problem-based learning. We professors are collecting the, all the questions from all the problem from the small and medium enterprise. And then we just readjusting whether much digestible by the, each of the students. So for example, this idea is coming from the uh, golf job, I can show the later, but in the golf, uh, the programming, uh, the company is uh, quite a big name in Korea, but uh, of course it's not popular in the outside in France or America. And then they want to make a more new types of innovation into the kids' cafe, which is an indoor playground, make an innovation. So that's why I'm just making a, okay, this time, uh, we want to make an air bounce so next time. We want to make a slide and something, something. It's more digestible ways. We professors are making a shorter and smaller. So, I mean, from the next, I mean, I prepared lots of slides, but I mean, that is most of them is uh, something why we believe the virtual reason of uh, previous uh, the presenters is talking what is virtual reality why that is important so i can skip many of the things to directly into our research methodology for how i can help the interdisciplinary students the students will learn about learn many things about interdisciplinary how they can use this virtual reality platform for their for the studies okay so i mean that is a Everyone mentioned that, but I mean, what we believe that there is big gaps in between the reality and virtual reality. So we believe that the existing or non-existing is very important concept between the reality and virtual realities. So other frameworks, many of the other frame, Milgram's framework and Mark Winder's framework is all saying different types of things, but still the same thing is that how we feel about the reality in the virtual reality is the main thing. But what we believe that art student, performing art student, and engineering student all knows about this movement issue. So I want to let the student uh, develop the new movement in the virtual reality. That is a main research methodology we are teaching in Department of Art and Technology. So, or like this one. So when student comes in, in into our lab, uh, we're talking about this kind of thing. So 
the main, I mean, uh, okay. Uh, okay, so performing artists, here, for example, they know that how to perform it because they are doing all their own movement by themselves. Because that is their, you know, ballet or something. They know Korean dance. They know everything about their movie. But I mean, if you want to make something, you are moving in the virtual reality. How can you make it? So, okay, engineering students say that, okay, we can provide all the visual feedback. And then also we can provide haptic feedback if you touch it. Uh, but performing art students say quite different ways, such as, I know what I'm doing. I know I am acting. I know why do we have to see on the background something is flowing, something is changing. So that is kind of how they feel different about the movement. So I give this kind of thing. Say like, okay, that is a current limitation about virtual reality. So if you want to click the button, your fingers, you know, it's penetrating about that object. So do you feel you are touching the real thing? I mean, you think that that is real thing or just uh, just fake thing? But everyone say that is fake thing. But why you believe that is real thing? Because I'm just wearing the head mounted display, and then I know this one is fancy and sexy stuff. But that is they should be real. But I mean, if you touch it, something is you know. That's why just uh, engineers people say, oh, okay, we can just give a haptic feedback when that is touch into the surface of the display too which is really, really difficult to make a coordinating in the virtual reality environment. So that is current situation. So current limitation as well as current situation in virtual reality is uh, our misunderstanding. Probably is uh, this kind of my personal uh, ideas, my personal uh, saying. Virtual reality cannot be reality. So, but I mean, many of the technicians are still trying to make a virtual reality. It looks like real, such as high definition resolutions, video clips, or real haptic feedback. It is sometimes olfactory feedback. They want to make everything is real. But I mean, human being already know in the field or in the virtual reality, they know that this one is fake. Thing. But I mean, the problem is, they are, have a higher level goal, say, okay, that could be okay, fine. If I complete the goal within the virtual reality environment, it's fine. But I mean, if my, if my high order goal is feeling like real, the virtual reality cannot provide the real thing. So we have to think about whether that is going to task-based design or simply sensation-based design is quite a different track. So, what I'm teaching to my student is you have to uh, choose one of each one. So if you want to really make something task-based design or goal-based design, you can go with this kinds of student, like engineering student or some other things. But if you want to go into sensation-based design, which is really hard, but I mean, you have to make a totally different research methodology. So what our professors, and with uh, lots of studies about, we well, our professors develop some kind of framework about the sense of movement. So we are teaching this one as a basic course. In the first year, when student comes into our department, or when the undergraduate student is coming to our lab as an internship, they have to study with the professors with this framework. So that is kind of, I mean, that is not the final version of our pro I mean, research paper, but we believe that uh, there are many, many keywords we can learn about the movement. They like uh, keyword is one of the keyword is agency, and the other one is ownership, and then proprioception is something about something about positioning understanding. So, if you go to some of the goal-based designs, so you don't too much care about what information in a virtual reality or augmented reality can provide. Because if you can complete any kinds of tasks, you feel you are agent. So because all the action, and all the effect is come out from the virtual reality or augmented reality is helping you finish the, your task, which means you are agent. So that is kind of process of agent that include all the parts, but I mean, that is quite a difference. So how we can provide really sensational feeling about 
let us say something about your motor intention, okay? How you have motor execution and muscle activation and proximal outcome and distant outcome. That is kind of what we technical perspective is a really big hurdle in virtual reality is the gaps, the temporal gap, or you know, that all the virtual reality sickness and virtual reality problem is come up from the, this kind of narrow sense of agent. So even though I do something, but feedback, visual feedback is a little bit slow, like 100 milliseconds. Sound is a little bit earlier, like a minus 50 milliseconds. If human beings, I mean, agent, as an agent, wearing the head mount display, they feel this one is not my action. It's coming from the computer cell. It's coming from the something else. So that is why I'm, we professors in our departments are teaching about this kind of uh, concept first. Of course, this one is uh, what my next uh, five minutes is only something about this multi-sensory because the reason why I believe that this multi-sensory integration or multi-sensory information is the future about virtual reality. And then what I believe the performing arts student and some of the artistic students can help the engineers understand more about the why the multi-sensory integration is important because the art students already know uh, multi-sensory is very important in their artwork, like uh, music or the painting, or they all know it. So that they are helping quite a lot to understand the multi-sensory from their perspective. So the next, uh, I prepared six sli uh, a slide more, but um, all of the uh, is a research outcome. Our uh, the research lab have completed. So I'm just uh, uh, quickly skip into the next slide to showing that some of the research question plus how we address each of them. So uh, I can skip it. So first question is of a narrow sense of agency. So which means how you feel about whether you can actually micro motor speed or micro motor action can help you understand or helping you feel uh, the your agency, your movement, your sense of movement. So that is what we did uh, experiment like this one in France. A very simple experiment in the uh, three or four years ago where the actual motion tracking, we have a motion tracking system in the back side, and then they are tracking the head, head positioning and hand positioning, even gait positioning, they can tracking it. And then based on these kinds of gait analysis, or positioning analysis, they can provide the information exactly on the screen. So we just compared it, like control group versus non-control group. So the outcome we found that is, uh, yeah, agency is very important. I mean, if you then, if you look at the table, simply say that non-perspective tracking and perspective tracking, so that is kind of non-significant locus of control means, we found the sense of agency, in particular locus of control, is the one of the big things we have to provide in the virtual reality to feel they are actually moving around in the virtual reality environment. So second experiment is much, much simpler. That is much popular in here. So likewise, we did, uh, I mean, she's uh, absolutely, uh, it's not a patient, but I mean, we developed this one as a part of the rehabilitation program. This one is, someone say, it's not a virtual reality environment, but it's very, pretty much game-based interaction, but we apply this one to the patient uh, in, in, uh, in the hospital, and then, we found that their uh, empathy, so they believe that that is kind of like a mirror neuron. They like that she is uh, something about, I have to emphasize to them, and then my movement is exactly reflected on the screens. And then uh, the patient, in this case, she feel that, or she emphasize, okay, I am moving, okay, and then avatar is moving, and then they believe that, okay, the, my sense of movement is still synchronized between the screen and myself. So that's kind of approach. We found that, okay, the virtual reality rehabilitation contest significantly improved the participant perceived control. So which means the sense of agency is still improved by the uh, each of patient. So that is idea we have found and then a little bit more about ownership. So this one is a big question. At this time, our professors are looking for, say, 
The sense of ownership is uh, quite a uh, uh, difficult situation, I mean, difficult uh, research topic, say, how people believe that uh, sensing what they have received from the eyes or ears or even skins is the, their own experience or their own sensing. Because most of the information from the virtual reality, sometimes they give uh, implicit information, and then people know that this one is something fake one. So what people really want from the virtual reality is uh, the sensing, the agent of sensing is myself, not from us, not from the other person. So that I have the feeling of the, the sense, and the, the sense is very important to believe that they are really acting on something. So this one is kind of what we have proposed and published in the many different times in the the uh, mag uh, magazine and the media in Korea. So one of the things about this one is we helping, uh, are we developing this kind of uh, uh, everyday object in here in virtual reality environment, and then they're just touching it, and then they're just uh, inserting it, they all different types of behavior they can do. And then at the end of the question, it's very simple. Whether you feel you are do some action or just play uh, in a game. So only two questions based on that, we found that what kinds of information is provided, what kinds of information is necessary to provide a real sense of ownership of the every information. So likewise, uh, that is the first one, and then uh, that is the first experiment we have completed it. So when people have a more sense of ownership, they can just move more. But if they have a very little um, a feeling about sense of movement, they just feel very small. So what we just simply found that, okay, sense of agency or sense of ownership is make people move more longer and more, you know, okay, so widely. It's not widely, but they're more active. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so last one is, I mean, uh, this one is also one of the experiments we have done to find uh, uh, that is probably, you believe, the most relevant to the multisensory integration in terms of research activities. Uh, one of the, my students have done this experiment based on his personal feeling. Say like, uh, you know, that the, the virtual world, he's developed all the virtual world content in our lab, and then uh, he is, uh, uh, doing many of the exercise to make all, all the real content for some student who have to complete their master and PhD thesis. But while he doing that, he just uh, mentioned that uh, it is very important. He seems that he seems to believe that it is very important to make a sync between the sound information and then visual information. So if any person to believe that that is a real thing, is visual information and sound information must be from the same object that is kind of uh, temporal spectrum, such as if the sound uh, come before the visual information, visual feedback, uh, people doesn't believe that this one is the right sound or that is not the real sound from the real object. So the other way around, how much we can combine between the two different types of information, one is auditory and the other one is visual information. So what he did actually in the experiment is something about this one. It's a very simple experiment. It's not a, not, this experiment has not been done on the virtual reality environment that is happening on the screen, the computer screen. But what we try to find that how much temporal gap between the visual information and sound information must be combined to give uh, a single information source, such as we provide visual information, sound information first, and then sometimes it's late visual information. So which means you can see that some of this clapping, however, the sound is come here before or sometimes quite late. So we found a very simple outcome. So 122 milliseconds plus minus 10 milliseconds is that. So which means in the virtual reality environment, what he actually assumed that if the multi-sensory integration must be uh, included in the virtual reality content design or virtual reality system design, 
uh, the limitation about the visual information source and auditory information source must be combined. I mean, must be, you know, is the result between these time difference. So that is what we found the multi-sensor integration can be one of the important design guidelines to make a virtual reality content. So the reason, I mean, I can say the, the original study from this one is coming from the, his personal experience, one of my students, but I mean, we try to use this kind of uh, very small guideline into the design of all virtual reality contents for the next project. Say like, now is uh, one of the performing arts student is doing about synchronized music their motion and the background sync is kind of simple media art project they are doing it. So what they are doing is making the project is successful is they have to make everything is between this target. So how the motion, okay, the ones performing artist motion can be visualized on the background that should be linked between around the yeah, 130 milliseconds. But technically it is possible, but I mean, spend more money. You need lots of money to make these kind of things happen within a single student project. So that's why they are making a new approach, how they feel, I mean, how the audience can feel uh, visual art, that means performing artists, the visual information plus sound information on the background or on the background screen can be seen as a single information source. So that is all things. I mean, I can quickly finish in the one minute so to make a time. <laughs> so this one is, I mean, at this time is with a student is doing about uh, some of the small and medium enterprise university, as small and medium enterprise company is looking for collaboration between our department and the, uh, the project. Basically, this one is simple. I mean, everyone knows about this virtual reality uh, the prototyping is the one of the things as uh, the quite a strong application domain. Uh, this one is one of the um, our uh, undergraduate student. She, uh, he is not graduate yet, but I mean, while he is doing the uh, research with us, I mean, he is still the fourth year student. He developed this kind of new uh, AI lens. I mean, what he did, I mean. I mean, he's an interesting guy. He's a really interesting figure. I mean, he just completed military service first. I mean, in Korea, it's a two years military service. is compulsory before he entering to the university. And then he's studying the industrial engineering, the mechanical engineering for two years, and then suddenly come to my lab, the art and technology lab, and then he want to make something new glass, like an artificial, I mean, augmented reality glass. I mean, and then he just found it called the Latina AR, and then what he really did was that new lens, new optical lens, which can be seen, I mean, even though some of the short-sighted people cannot see the pictures very clearly on the artificial, uh, sorry, the AR lens, but I mean, he just break through the, about these AR uh, problems with this, is a new idea. So that new idea is very interesting. He read, he read uh, lots of uh, art book, and he suddenly said, uh, okay, so in the old art time, in olden times, the, the artist using this kind of special lens to see the, the perspective. So that's why he tried to find all the articles to make, uh, okay, so if his idea is right, he want to make this one to be realized in the particular art, uh, augmented reality and the lens. So that's what he's doing at this time. And then uh, he get a fund a lot, but I mean, I don't know whether he's a successful fund or not. Still ongoing project. So that's the whole things I have prepared. I mean, of course, it's a very short time. And then I'm trying to, I'm beginning with some of the, my personal experience, why the Hanan University uh, start off about this interdisciplinary research. And then when we build up the interdisciplinary department, what kinds of uh, research methodologies needed, and then how can we found the common ground between the artists and engineers, so that I believe the virtual reality is one of the springboard or research platform 
of all, all people can work together as a greatest interdisciplinary 